So what does a company building open source monitoring look like? A conversation with Mike McNeil, CEO and co-founder of Fleet DM. This is a bonus episode of The Business of Tech. Well, Mike, your company came to my attention because I'm always looking at management technologies and observability technologies in the in the space, and I've been flirting with the idea of how open source plays in the way it works with these monitoring technologies. And then here is a company focused just on that. But let's in order before we even get into what Fleet DM is, I think we have to take one step back for those that aren't familiar with OS Query, and can, you can tell us what that project is because it builds on that. So what is OS Query? Yeah, so OS Query is a way to ask questions about any kind of device. Um, a, a few years back at Facebook, my co-founder, Zach Wasserman, was working with um, a little small team and then a guy named Mike Arpaia. And Mike Arpaia had this vision for, why don't we take all these bash scripts and PowerShell scripts we're writing and try to find a way to express them in a cross-platform way? And then it became like, well, why not just use SQL? It's a 50-year-old language at this point. A lot of folks know it. It's pretty good at gathering data from a bunch of different places. Let's arrange all the data on the operating system, like the processes, you know, the currently running processes, the installed apps, all that good stuff as different tables, uh, and then let you kind of like suck the data out of it however you want in the query. Gotcha. So, so it's, it's ways of getting that kind of information. And, so, and that's an open source project that anybody can start working on, right? Yeah, and it's it's at this point about seven years old, so it's twenty fifteen uh, circa. Okay, and you're CEO and founder of Fleet DM. So, what's the relationship between OS Query and Fleet DM? Yeah, so Fleet the product was actually built in twenty seventeen back at a company called Collide, um, and they were kind of finding you know what is our go to market going to be? This is an open source tool. We'll put it out there. They ended up going a different direction and building a, uh, a new SaaS hosted product. And then Fleet was kind of left without a maintainer. Um, so Zach Wasserman, my co-founder, also co-founded Collide. And he left in uh, 2019, kind of when they went a different direction. And then he was, uh, he consulted with, you know, different folks, Bloomberg, uh, et cetera. And then, you know, kind of ratcheted up the scale it could handle, ratcheted up the scale, the scale higher and higher. Uh, and then about, I guess, 2020 fall, uh, he and I met, and that's when we decided, hey, let's found an open core company. Is it a little bit like the relationship with Red Hat and Linux, if I'm trying to put it into frame, where, where there's an open source product, you know, Red Hat, of course, tries to offer support and services on top of Linux, which is open source. Is that the way that you're looking at the relationship between Fleet DM and OS Query? More closely tied. Uh, well, between, you know, OS Query itself is totally free. It's a Linux Foundation project. Um, and Fleet itself is also completely open source. So literally the UI code, the backend code, uh, the command line tool, everything about it down to our handbook that we use to manage employees, um, all of that is public. Uh, and, and even the paid features are source available. So how are you guys monetizing? What, what's the paid for portion then of, of what's going on here? Yeah, so it works uh, just like GitLab. So there is a, uh, a license you pay for, and if you want access to the paid features um, to actually be able to use them with a license, uh, you buy the license, and then you also get support as part of that. Gotcha. So who are you taking this out as kind of your target? Like who's the perfect buyer for what you guys are doing? So we think about it in terms of like the adopter. You know, it's like before you buy a product, you got to buy the idea, right? So there are security engineers and IT engineers out there, um, sometimes MSPs, uh, sometimes actually large MSPs um, who have a lot of different customers to look after, who want kind of a nice tool to use to be able to see like what's going on and what they need to do with their fleet of devices. Um, and so usually those two roles are, are where it starts, an IT, uh, IT engineer, security engineer, or somebody kind of wearing that hat for a smaller organization. Okay, well, you brought them up first. Uh, so you brought up MSPs. Uh, I'm going there. But so now that you've brought them up, one of the big things that MSPs are always looking for, as you alluded to, is that they're managing multiple customers. 
are you addressing that via multi-tenancy in the product? Do they do separate installs? Like how does that portion work when you're, when you're an MSP and you're trying to manage multiple customers? So I, I think it depends a lot on the contract between the MSP and, and their customers. Um, you know, if they have a strict requirement not to have data live together in the database, then they're going to have separate deployments. Um, and the cool thing about being 100% self-managed is that people can basically hook it up however they want, right? Um, that said, I, I know even large, uh, or at least one large MSP is uh, is using our Teams feature within Fleet to accomplish some of this. So to be able to kind of partition not as much groups of people, like that for sure, but more so the actual devices. Um, so if you have, you know, 100 different customers, you could use 100 different teams to represent. Gotcha. So it does support the idea of organiz separate organizations within a single instance, leveraging, so leveraging your Teams feature. Okay, great. Uh, so that, then if I'm thinking about this, you know, what's, what are you positioning as your differentiator? Is it just the we're open source or what is the differentiator of using open source in this approach? When you go out to buy a product, right, you kind of, you stand there at the precipice right before you make this decision. And uh, you know what you're going to get is, well, you hope what you're going to get is quality. You, uh, you almost know for certain it's going to be closed source and it's going to be a black box. If something's wrong, you can file a feature request or you can file a bug report if you're lucky. Um, and hopefully it'll get fixed quickly, right? It's kind of the standard norm we're all used to as products. With open source, like it's inspectable and it's modifiable. So any any of your developers can go look at the source code. Um, you can go actually do a pull request and change it yourself, even for the paid features. Um, and then as far as you know, as far as why open source matters up and down. So we're not. It's not just the fleet server, but we're actually deploying this agent right on every, everybody's device, and uh, it's. It gives some folks peace of mind to know that they can go look at the source code for the actual agent running on their computer um, or on their servers. If you think about an app like Signal, it's kind of the same principle there in the messaging world. Right. So is this something that security teams have been doing a lot more? Are they pursuing open source endpoint strategy more commonly? What are you seeing out there in the market? I think the definition of what a security practitioner is, is evolving a little bit. Um, code literacy is leaking everywhere, right, throughout the organization. So more and more people are becoming like, hey, I'm not just a vulnerability analyst. Like, I'm a vulnerability analyst who knows a little bit of SQL, can write a little bit of Python or Go, and is maybe going to set up some automations, right? I don't have all day to look at tickets. There's more and more data. There's more and more tickets. Um, let's get smarter about what tickets are actually getting created, right? Instead of creating a ticket for every new potential CVE, let's only create a ticket for CVEs that match one of the devices in our fleet and actually relates to installed software. Um, those kind of features folks are building by hand right now, um, especially in the enterprise where there's budgets to allow folks to have headcount, right, and do that. Um, but the reality is you end up with a thousand different ways to reinvent the same thing. And so the cool part about open source is if we get everybody kind of uh, working on one shared baseline, then uh, you you don't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel every single time. Gotcha. So what what's the perception that security teams are really getting wrong about this approach and specifically like OS query? What do they get wrong often here? So OS Query is a seven-year-old, you know, open source project at this point, right? So it's had lots of different levels of uh, stability and, um, and scalability. So a lot of teams, if they implemented OS Query a few years back, may not have the latest kind of look at what tools are available. Um, they may have even had to build their own server from scratch, right? Um, and it could be working great, or it could be something that they're having to invest a lot of time in maintaining. Um, so kind of switching something, switching to something that other teams are using is helpful to get you out of that maintenance um, eternity. Right. So what market segment are you actively pursuing with, with Fleet DM? So we, uh, we are pursuing, you know, companies, we call them enterprise companies, but really it's, it's anywhere, anyone with, you know, more than 500 customers or more than 500 uh Endpoints, I should say. Sorry. A so big, di big difference between <laughs> so, big, big difference. difference, right? So you're going after anybody with more than 500 endpoints. Exactly, and and those could be uh, all laptops. We get, you know, it could be an IT team or a client platform team coming to us, or it could be a uh, a security team that's looking at endpoints and servers. 
Um, at one company, it's even the the SRE team. You're not, and are you looking at uh, end? Are you going kind of direct to customers? Are you looking for service providers? Like, what? Where's the ideal entry point into the market for you? We're working with one large MSP, which has been really awesome. Um, and in that case, it's kind of just all you know. We're behind the scenes providing the the tools for them and the support that they need to use it to operate security for their customers. Um, we've also done kind of like referral uh, type agreements in the past as well. But for us, the, the best thing we can do is just empower whoever the customer is, whether it's an MSP or it's an enterprise, um, give them the tools they need, give them direct access to one of the creators of OS Query, um, and, and really just kind of like bring ourselves onto their team and help them build what's missing um, that they need to automate. So are you, are you, you guys are looking at a roadmap then of expanding OS query? Are you publishing that? How do people get a sense of where you're going with your product set? Yes. So we're, uh, you know, we're getting to be a big enough company. We're starting to have like OKRs and things like that. Um, but if you check out uh, our handbook, that's a great place to get started, to get to discover kind of what's going on with the company. Um, and with the open source project, our docs are on the same website. So all that's on fleetdm.com. Um, and our, our whole like issue roadmap and all of the code that's getting changed lives on GitHub. Thanks for listening to this bonus episode of The Business of Tech. If you like it, hit the like button and hit that red subscribe button. It really does make a difference and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to what I'm doing. You want to discuss more? Want to find out more about the interview? Go ahead and put something in the comments. I read them all and I look forward to the ongoing discussion. If you want to get content like this every single day, the five minute Business of Tech podcast is available wherever fine podcasts are found. Go to businessof.tech, click the blue subscribe button. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Additionally, if you want to help me with the content that I create, you can support me directly. Go to patreon.com slash MSP radio and click the button there. You choose what the content is worth and get access to these interviews and discussion episodes early. They come out for my Patreons and Patreons drive the discussion and ask questions directly. Looking forward to ongoing conversations and thanks for watching.